During the Cold War, it was the struggle between two superpowers, the Soviet Union and the United States. What is a superpower exactly? Technically, there's no definition, but most often the agreed upon one is that a superpower is a country that can fight and exert economic or cultural influence on a global scale. During the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union try to compete over every corner of the world. With the Soviet Union gone, Russia is no longer considered a superpower. While they're still very powerful, they simply aren't able to send their military and financial influence to certain areas of the globe like they could a few decades ago. Meanwhile, the United States can still do so on every continent. However, one thing that's often forgotten is that during the Cold War there was briefly one country that was considered a third superpower, a third country that could similarly send its influence and military to anywhere on the globe, at least for a brief while. That country is the UK. What? The UK? How is that possible? Well, in the first use of the term superpower, the UK was included as a third superpower. In 1944, when the term was first used, it was used for the Americans, British, and Soviets as they were waging their military and influence around the world because, you know, World War II. Does that apply for the Cold War, though? For a short while, it actually did. While the UK did side with the United States, the UK still did conduct its own military operations, nuclear tests, and helped with coups in other countries to help their own strategic interests, just like the other two superpowers did. It's not like they wanted to be forced into a sphere of influence of another country, and they certainly tried to avoid it for as long as they could. How did it end, though? Well, remember, the British Empire got bombed to the ground and exhausted a lot of its resources during World War II. The British Empire was the largest empire in the world, so it was able to take the punch, but its struggles were going to be inevitable. The empire was too expensive and hard to maintain after that punch. They could keep their status for a bit, but it wouldn't be long. It wasn't a matter of if they'd lose their superpower status, but rather when. They began losing their territory around the world through decolonization, which quickly lowered their influence. Arguably, the loss of British India in 1947 was their biggest loss in terms of economic and territorial prowess. In fact, many people would say that's when their superpower status ended, but there are other things that some historians used to judge when they were no longer considered a superpower. There's the fact that the United States had to essentially bail them out economically with the Marshall Plan in 1948. However, most would say it was the Suez Crisis in 1956. Basically, the ruler of Egypt nationalized the Suez Canal. The British, along with the French, planned to secure their financial interests and stop that through military intervention. However, it was a big failure and pressure from both superpowers forced them to withdraw. It was a humiliation for the British. They couldn't do what the other superpowers did anymore. They were financially and militarily exhausted to the point to where they couldn't do something like that outside of their own territories if another superpower didn't approve of it first. Their superpower status by then was definitely over. So, in terms of the Cold War that started in 1945, depending on which ending you picked, they were a superpower for either two years, three years, or eleven. Either way, it was a brief moment that wasn't going to last. If we want to apply the superpower definition to outside the Cold War, the British were arguably superpowers for over a century or two. During the 1800s, they sent their military to every continent in the globe, even Antarctica. They had colonies everywhere. They had the largest empire and economy. So you could argue that they weren't the third superpower, but rather the original superpower. Some would argue that Spain during its heyday in the 1500s and 1600s might be considered a superpower. Maybe even France was a superpower for brief moments as well. Regardless, when it came to the Cold War, there was, for a brief moment, a third superpower. 